Bonsoir, messieurs, dames. Je suis très content d'être ici encore une année. Encore une fois, c'est la quatrième fois que je suis ici à Paris. Donc je connais la moitié de l'audience. C'est comme chez moi maintenant. Et cette année, je vais parler de qu ce qui s'est passé après la version 6.2. Qu'est-ce que nous, l'équipe des produits, nous sommes en train, en train de développer maintenant et que, quelles sont les futures tendances que nous, que nous voyons pour l'avenir de, de l'IP comme produit. Si ça ne vous dérange pas, je vais parler en anglais, parce que je, je suis plus à l'aise euh, quand je parle technique en anglais. Mais si vous avez des, des questions ou quelque chose, vous pouvez venir parler avec moi après. So, you know, in December 2013, we released 6.2 year one. And when we released it, we decided to start releasing more frequently. So in the past, we had one version every year, and we discovered that that wasn't enough for our customers. So we started releasing service packs as updates for security issues or for missing uh, parts or functionalities in the products. So we decided to make it even uh, better for this version. So more or less every month since we have released this latest version, we have released a new service pack. So. Uh, for the uh, enterprise version, we have released Service Pack 1 to Service Pack 5, which is going to be out this week. And also for the Community Edition, we have released a new version with some security uh, bug fixes, which are really important for our customers. And our idea wasn't only to, to release new security updates or bug fixes, but also uh, take advantage of our marketplace to keep releasing new features, new portlets, new version of our applications throughout the whole um, product cycle. So um, we have released a new version of all the products. Like for example, Social Office, we have released a new version, which is Social Office number three, uh, which is basically a new version adapted for Library Portal 6.2 and comes with major updates, major new features, and above all, mobile responsive, uh, responsive design. And it's available for both CE and EE versions. We have also been investing in tools for our developers, and we have worked on the developer studio version 2. Uh, it is still in beta, but it's going to be released. The final version is going to be released like next week or the week after. It. And basically, we have been listening to the community, and Maven was one of the top requests by all the developers. So we have added Maven support to our developer studio. And also, uh, as some of you have already mentioned, we are uh, doing an extensive usage of free marker as a template system in our portal. So we have added the free market debugger uh, feature to help our customers, our developers, be able to, to develop easier applications using templates in the portal. And also IB integration. Not only those tools, but also our libraries has been updated to have even more components, more visual improvements, and for that, that reason, we have released a new version of Alloy, Alloy UI 2.5, and Library Faces. So those using JSF and Library Faces bridges, this is the new, the new version that we have released. And all this is, uh, has been done during the last five months. And it, it's not only improvements in terms of libraries and, and the product itself, it's also new, plugin, new plugins, new applications, or new portlets. The first one, uh, is the response of Liferay to uh, something that our customers were demanding since we opened the marketplace. So, you know, we opened our marketplace like one year, one year and a half ago, and the first thing that customers told us is, how do I know that an application that a third party has developed is not going to kill my server? Basically, how do you, how do you trust the applications, right? So we have built the Portlet Sandbox, which is basically an isolated space where you can deploy applications both developed by your developers or by third-party developers, uh, being sure that it's going to be completely isolated. It's going to have a separated virtual machine, and it's not even capable to affect your, your portal. So in terms of security and stability, it's going to be 
a major update. Then we have started seeing huge adoption of light rain in Middle East and Northern Africa. So if uh, you have experienced um, creating a portal in Hebrew or in Arab, you know that red, right to left languages are, are complex, right? There are many things when you have to turn all the images, all the text, all the buttons, all the icons, everything you need to, to show it in the, in the other way. So we have released an application that basically does that for you. So if you're working on Morocco, on North Africa, on Israel, on any of those countries using Hebrew or Arabic languages, then this is going to help a lot. And finally, we have released an oh. I use Linux. So. <laughs> it's funny that I touch something next and everything explodes. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and the latest is the SharePoint connector. We have released a new version of the SharePoint connector, which basically is solving many, many of the issues that we found before. And basically, that's for all customers uh, connecting their documentation system into our document library. So there's a new version available. But not only new applications, also we have new products. We have also been talking today and yesterday there were some demonstrations and talks about both the mobile SDK and the library cloud services. Um, both are answering to our customers' needs. Basically, um, we have seen, I'll start with the mobile SDK. We have seen how more and more companies are being asked by the customers to extend that web experience into their pockets. People is used to um, have access to that information where they want it, information that matters where they need it. So people is not going to wait to arrive to the office to, to access the information that is really important. Uh, salespeople who are on the road are willing to have uh, all the information in their pockets. And we have realized that um, even if we build uh, certain applications, certain mobile applications that access our services, it is always going to be a need in our customers' projects to be able to build their own applications. So based on our experience building native applications, we have, we have built this tool, which basically helps you uh, connect your native applications to communicate uh, with your custom services in Library Portal and also with our uh, core services in Library. So you know that up to now we had the Library Service Builder, which basically you define an entity, you could publish uh, the whole uh, service in your portal and then you could build a portlet to consume it. So now we are going a step further. We are generating the client side for that service. So if you're going to build an Android application, an iOS application, we are giving you that bridge that talks from your phone to your server. Basically, we are giving you utilities to uh, authenticate your users, utilities to communicate securely, to access our custom services, our core services, like uh, document library, blogs, whatever you have, and also for your applications. So imagine if you develop and a, a web application to manage, I don't know, your um, human resources. You will be able to consume all your custom services uh, using this, this application. And it's, going, it's template based, so you will have an Android template, an iOS template, and you will, you will be able to generate all the code needed for both, for both applications. And the good thing is it, it is also integrated with the library developer studio. So you can, you can have the whole story since you build the, the service for the portal and then generate all the clients for different mobile devices. The next product that we have built during these months, uh, it is still in beta. We are testing it uh, with a customer base of like 100 customers. And it's basically an online tool that will uh, um, will give you a set of services that 
will help you understand what's going on in your portal, in your servers. So basically, you install a client in your, in your server, and boom, you can go to our cloud services and see which uh, updates are available for your servers. You can see information like uh, JVM information, which are top accessed pages, which are the portlets that are being most accessed, which are the slowest pages, the slowest portlets, which, where are the bottlenecks of your applications. And also we have information about cache, so this is fundamental for developers trying to understand what's going on on the portals. And also information about JDBC pools, thread pools, so, and this is only the beginning. Right now we have those two services, metrics and fixed pack management tools, uh, which we think are really important for our customers, but this is only the beginning. As it is an online platform, we plan to keep developing services so that you connect your servers and we'll take care of giving you added value out of the box. And this is, in, as, I, as I mentioned, in private beta. We sold out the 100 tickets in like a day and a half or so. But if you are interested in playing with it, just come to talk to me after this presentation. Well, that, that is what we've been doing for the last five months. Not bad, huh? And now I'm going to talk about what we are developing now that will be part for, um, will be part of 6.2 as additional plugins, or will be part of Library 7. The first thing, and this is going to, to be part of 6.2, so all those of you that are using 6.2 in your, in your projects are going to benefit from this when this is available. Basically, we are, <coughs> we are saying that Library is a platform for engagement. And what does it mean to us? So basically, we are building a platform that's, that allows you to reach your audience through different channels. We don't care if it's a mobile device, a tablet, or a web browser, and through different steps in the relationship. So basically, this is really tied together with, with Brian uh, talked this morning. So you have a customer that is using your intranet, and then you have this user using the extranet, and then you have the public website, and then you have stores or, or whatever. So we want to be this layer that communicates everything. And to achieve that, we really need to understand who our user is. And the first thing that, that it's important, and we've seen this uh, in different presentations during today, we've seen that how big projects are investing a lot in making the experience for each user really unique. And for that, we want, we want to invest in this. We've seen projects doing all kinds of, of developments and investments to, to make sure that the websites are optimized and personalized for each user. So we want to, to invest on that so that in the future you don't need to invest on it, right? So we want to personalize the experience of our users. Uh, in library.com, for example, uh, we think that there's nothing worse than a developer looking for information and then getting seen banners of download this EE version, for example, right? It's, it's not the right target. And there's nothing worse than a person looking for a trial to download the EE version and then getting information about weird techie stuff, right? So we want to make sure that all the right information arrives to the right people. So we are investing heavily on content targeting. We are building an infrastructure that allows you to define user segments, that allows you to show the information that really matters to that user, and then to measure it, to measure the impact that the content is creating in those users. So what we built is an infrastructure, a rule-based system that allows you to define user segments um, using some, some kind of rules, can be gender, can be age, can be his position in the world, right? If you want to show different, different content to people coming from Italy and coming from France or whatever, and also devices. And this is, this is all extensible, obviously. So we have a, a rule engine there. 
And also, we have created the possibility to define campaigns, because we understand that this person personalization is not going to last forever. You, can you want to be able to define certain campaigns to have this behavior during a certain amount of time. So if it's 10 days before the symposium, and you know that this user is an enterprise user, I'm going to show a banner about business tracks, about business presentations we are going to experience here in the, in the symposium. If it's today before and then it's a developer, you're going to show all the technical information, right? So we, we are uh, building this campaign framework so that you can define rules also based on time. But also, when you define this, you usually don't know what the user is seeing, right? So we, are, we have built an impersonation um, experience mode. So basically, you can interact with your site behaving as a developer, as a business user, or as any of those uh, segments that you have created. So that you, as a content creator, you always know what the user is going to see in your website. We have started with content, with web content, because it's the most basic and obvious um, element to start working with. But this is only the beginning. As you know, we are a framework. And we want to extend it to users. For example, imagine that you have an internal, uh, an internet, and you want to look for uh, experts. So imagine that you can show the information that is really relevant. If I'm uh, someone from sales, I want to find someone from marketing. Don't tell me about developers, for example, right? And we want to make it uh, available also for apps. So depending on your profile, you'll be able to access certain apps or not recommendations, announcements, themes, layouts, and offers uh, focused on e-commerce. And as I mentioned, we are a framework. So we, ha we have built this using OSGI components so that every developer uh, will be able to define new rules and launch them um, basically without having to restart anything or whatever. Everything is it's going to be extensible and hot deployable. And that's for content targeting. But what about the, the actual experience? We are building uh, a set of improvements that has been coming from the community, from customers constantly asking for. For example, um, this is something that the community has been asking for a long time. It's like, I get a notification that there's a new version of my content. How do I see the differences, right? It seems silly that we have built it. We are uh, defining different workflows uh, per different content types. That is something that has, the community has been asking for a long time. And today, someone asked me if that was going to be also available. So that is going to be available. We are improving the experience of creating the content. So we are crea creating CK editor extensions so that you can have autocomplete when you are creating your content. And that is also an extensible framework. So you can define rules that your users will type, and it will be autocompleted with links, with images, with whatever you need. And also, we, are, we have created a mentions uh, framework, so that every time you mention a user, he gets a notification. One of the top uh, new features in 6.2 was application display templates, and we keep improving. We have developed um, application display template support for new portlets, like the languages portlet, navigation, breadcrumb, and we plan to keep adding more. So if you're interested in having more supported, tell us, because um, based on user feedback, we are prioritizing this. Also, um, all email notifications are now unified and can be translatable to uh, as many languages as you need. So that is something also coming from the community. And user experience revamp. We keep improving portlet by portlet. We, we are doing a full revision of the usability. We are now working on knowledge base and Kaleo forms. So we keep improving in that sense. This is something that, under my point of view, is going to change the way we experience library in the future. Single page application. It's a new technology. Our UI engineers have been working with, uh, with Yahoo and Google Teams. And this is something that uh, has been experienced with during the last five years or so. So 
it's basically a way to show a full application into a, into a page. Basically, define different areas in that page, and the information is only flowing to, from the server to the browser when the user needs it. Okay? So if you, if you think of a normal library interface, you see that it's built out of different components. Up to now, we call them portlets. Now we call them surfaces. They are still portlets, but there are different sections in the UI. What we are trying to do is, right now, if you have an, a, a page full of applications, when you interact with a single application, everything reloads, right? So that means that you need to reshare the, the banner, the headers, the footers, the, bro the, the menus, all the navigation items. So we are focusing on throwing that to the bin and being able to refresh certain parts of the, of the page. So this, in the past, was done using Ajax, but that led to tons of problems in, in, in many different ways. So we are investing heavily in this application, mostly uh, for two reasons. First, it is really great for the user. The sensation of uh, speed and response time when they are browsing the website is amazing. And second, because the amount of traffic between the server and the browser is much uh, smaller. That means that if you have a, a mobile phone, you have a mobile device, it's terrible. You have a mobile device and you are constantly accessing certain website, you are only going to download what really matters to you, where you are clicking, not the whole website again. So this is really important for the user, for its experience, and for mobile browsing. Geolocation. This is something customers have been asking a lot also. So uh, lately, people is browsing your websites using their mobile devices. And you want the information to be adapted to where the user is, right? Uh, basically, the amount of mobile search has been exploding through the last year, last year and a half. So we want to add a new layer to our content management system that basically can capture where the content is located so that when users are looking for that, that information, uh, all the information comes up um, ordered by proximity and you, you are able to, to see the information where it has been created or what, where you want it to be shown, right? Out of the box, we have integrated with Google Maps and with OpenStreetMaps, but these are templates, so you can extend them to, to build all the systems if you, if you need. More third party. We have been talking about Bootstrap the whole day, right? It's like, we finished 6.2 and then these guys released Bootstrap 3 and then we have, you know, we couldn't update in time. So we, are in, we have upgraded uh, for the next version to Bootstrap 3. Basically, Bootstrap 3 has been rebuilt to be mobile first. So that is going to impact the way library behaves in the, in the following version. It's going to be much better in terms of mobile browsing. Also, Elasticsearch, it's going to be a major change. You know that up to now, we, we use Lucene as our indexing system for the searches. So we have built an integration with Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is built, it's, open, it's an open source project, it's built using uh, Lucene, and it's especially pre prepared, uh, sorry, especially prepared for enterprise applications that are huge, are massively scalable, and it is really um, elastic in the terms that it, it is really prepared and optimized to be able to grow both for cloud installations and on-premise installations. And also the benefits is that it has a lot of tools that you can um, configure to work with it to do a live, um, live metric analysis, and they have amazing tools to pre, to pre visualize and to, to have a visualization of what's going on in your portal in real time. Also, something, something else for the developers. We have been asked tons of times how can we as developers build integration tests for our for your applications, develop over library. So we have integrated with Archelian which is a framework that will allow you exactly to do that, to develop integration tests for your applications 
without having to take care of the whole portal. So Archelian will take care of uh, bringing up a portal for you, and you will need you you you'll forget about having to mock up all the all the connections with the portal. So integration tests easy now. And this is now this is what what is real, what is already in today's in today's master. And what about the future? Uh, you know, in, li in library we are focused in three users. So every every feature that we develop is targeted to one of those users. The first one is the end user, and basically that's the anonymous browser or your customers or your employees, people that is browsing your website. Then we have the power users, which are those who are building experiences for the final user, those uh, creating content, those creating applications uh, online, those creating forms, those uploading images. And then we have the developers, which are basically doing integration with third parties and creating applications for those other two users. So what, what are we going to target on for each one of those users in the future? For the developer, we want library to be really light. We, currently, we have a monolithic core plus additional applications, right? So we want that monolithic core to be really light. We are uh, separating the applications of the core, and we are making it OSEI so that you can enable or disable based on your needs. So we want library to be modular and really simple to use. Uh, also, one of our product focus is improved APIs. We think library is a framework, is a platform, and we want uh, new technologies to be using that framework for that, we are improving our APIs, and we want to embrace new technologies like Node.js, Amber, Angular, and all these technologies that really needs a strong backend service, and we want to be that, that backend service for those new technologies. And finally, it's quite related, mobile enterprise application platform. We want to be the platform that native applications, mobile applications need. Basically, we see that in the market nowadays, and we've seen several uh, presentations today related to this. Um, the, the portal is not being accessed from uh, your browsers anymore. Some, some of you have presented today case studies where um, your data is being accessed by uh, small devices. Uh, I've been talking to some of you who are connecting TVs to library, who are connecting applications, and maybe no one accesses it in the web. Everyone accesses it through those devices. We know there are projects connecting medical devices. There are projects connecting domotic elements to control the fridge, to control the temperature of the house. So we are seeing a, a new trend in, in using library as a platform without, without uh, content management, etc., etc. We are seeing a usage of the platform as a way to manage user permissions and expose services. So we want to, to improve in terms of scalability, security, uh, um, easy, that it is easy to use and to be able to provide these kind of services, both on-premise or on the cloud, to be able to, to be this backend service that connects with your third-party applications and expose that information to those devices. That, that is one of the goals for, for the next versions. For the end user, as we've talked before, the user, we, want us, we want the user to be the center of the experience. And for that, we need to understand the user. We need to know him. So for that, we are adding analytics, reporting, visualization. And also, we want to be able to, to measure its interactions making use of A-B testing, content targeting, and these campaigns that we are going to release now. And finally, for the power user, we are focusing on collaboration and productivity and on its capability to build experience on, on the web. The first thing, we are doing some research in something called conversations. Basically, um, collaboration up to now was focused on communication in several uh, directions. So there was 
a content creator that, ex uh, that created a blog entry, for example, and there were others commenting on it, there were others sharing it, liking it, or whatever, right? So we are missing something in that way to collaborate, and it's the target of that interaction. If you want to get that task completed, you want to perform and be being productive, you need, you need this goal you are working towards. So basically, we are building or we are analyzing a new way of collaborating so that we make sure that productivity is, is the key goal of that. And finally, we are improving the way we build forms, we build applications online. We want to be able to, to keep improving our list application building. We want to be able to do reports and mappings based on that, um, on our framework without having to need this developer uh, behind it. And I'm running out, out of time. And if you have questions, I think we have five minutes, maybe? No? I guess so, yeah. So if you have questions. Uh, do you have some milestones for different versions? Sorry? Some, um, some dates? Do, do you know when we will have these different versions? Um, for Library 7, are yes, you talking yes, about? for example. Oh. Uh, 2015? Well, uh, I don't like to, to say dates because we never get there and we are quite far uh, from the release date, so I'd prefer not to do it. Our plan is to have a major version every year. So we had the last version in December, January, so you do your math. Any other question? I don't know. I didn't really realize. Didn't you start in French and then switch to English? Yeah, that is why you understand. <laughs> you were you were talking about the localization of the content or geolocalization. What do you mean exactly by that? So up to now, we have a first prototype working that basically, based on HTML5, when you create a content, it takes your position and um, so, for example, if, if you upload a document, a picture, or, or a web content, it knows where you are and it stores your, your position. After that, you can go to an asset publisher, for example, and choose the map view, and you will see all the, all the contents there. That is what we have now. We, we plan to add more capabilities, like being able to, to geotag a content, like select this is Rome, not, not Paris, right? So, so that, that is the plan. Are you planning to extend the permissions framework to adapt it to the new uh, content management system? It is part. I mean, this this doesn't change anything in the in the permissions ledger. Uh, so, for example, your content management for targeting uh, some um, segments of uh, the population would be applied like a permission, something like that. You define rules. And I mean, you can define permissions for the content, and you can define rules. And the rules are never going to override permissions. So even if you are a male over 30, if you don't have permissions to see a content, you will never see that content. So that's where I mean, okay. permissions are based now on rules. So right. Are you so to it? no, no. I think rules are going to be apart from from permissions. Hmm. Okay. On the geolocalization geolo that we've seen, so you, you say, okay, I create a content and then it's localized, but then the reverse way, uh, do you plan to be able to pop up content to the user based on his location? That is content targeting. That, that is doable, that you only just need to, to define a rule that says that if you are coming from France, 
show this content. That, that, that is independent from the geolocation framework. That would be part of the content targeting. I'm, I'm in front of McDonald's. I want to show a promotion and offer. So this is part of content targeting. Yeah. Thanks. Non, si vous avez plusieurs de questions, venez chercher moi ou venez parler avec moi. Si vous avez des idées pour améliorer les produits aussi, venez, venez parler avec moi. Merci.